Hey, good morning, everybody. Everybody in my Mount Pleasant and Impact family, it's good to see you this morning. Good to be able to spend a few minutes with you today. Uh, this is day six of our Let Us Pray 40 Days of Prayer experience as a church family. And I hope that uh, you woke up today in a good mood. You woke up today feeling blessed and feeling the presence of God. Uh, it's been a crazy time for all of us, no question. You know, the, I get up. Uh, every morning and uh, make myself a little breakfast and uh, it's the only time I really let myself watch a little bit of the news and kind of try to catch up with what's going on and it's just uh, every day it just seems a little bit more crazy but uh, we're continuing to pray and trust God uh, and uh, the fact that he's in control of tomorrow. Uh, I hope that uh, being uh, shut up at home is not being too difficult for you. You know it's kind of funny it's just Sandy and I here we uh, aren't able to see our kids or grandkids or anything. Uh, we walked uh, past uh, our Andrew and Kara's house uh, the other day, just kind of maybe hoping we might get a glimpse of the grandkids out in the backyard, but we didn't see them. Andrew said he saw us through the window and waved, but we couldn't see him. And Sandy went over the other day because they have a freezer in their garage, and we had some food in the freezer, and uh, I guess Jack saw her from his bedroom window, and so he was pretty pumped up about that. But I hope you're surviving. You know, Sandy and I are, we're uh, binge watching, uh, every night we're binge watching the television series Parenthood on Hulu. And that's uh, one of the ways we're passing some time in the evening. And what's really funny about this to me is that, you know, uh, I don't I don't necessarily eat a lot of food, but when you're stuck at home, sometimes all you think about is food and what you're gonna eat next. And uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, we were talking about what, our meals were going to be, and and Sandy has some chili uh, that's frozen in in the in the freezer, and I love chili, and uh, uh, so I said, well, let's have some chili cheese dogs for lunch tomorrow. And ever since I said that yesterday, all I can think about is eating chili cheese dogs today for lunch. So it's kind of crazy uh, being stuck like this, and your mind uh, uh, goes crazy places sometimes. But I'm glad to spend a few minutes each morning with you focused on uh, the Word of God and focused on prayer. And of course, our verse for today is Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9, which is just such a great verse. Uh, anybody who's ever read it or heard it just holds it in their heart. But these are words that were spoken to Joshua by God right before he was going to lead the Israelites, finally lead them into the promised land. They'd been to the edge of the promised land before under the leadership of Moses, but they they didn't, uh, they didn't, they weren't able to enter basically because of a lack of faith and because of fear. And so now uh, the promised land is a reality for them. And this is what God says to Joshua in Joshua chapter one and verse nine. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What a great, great verse. And then here's the devotional thought that Fred wrote to go along with that. The whole of the Bible is all about God's presence with his people. We are his people. There is no place where we can go to escape his presence, even into the depths of war as Joshua was facing as they would cross the Jordan River and take possession of the land. Pandemics have recently been compared to war, a war with an enemy we cannot see. God's message to Joshua was that in a time of calamity, he would be with Joshua. This is also true for us today. The fact that God commanded this to Joshua indicates that he knows we are weak, but in his presence, we can take courage and be strong. God knows we can be fearful, but he is faithful. And then, of course, uh, the prayer focus today is let's praise God and choose to allow his faithful presence to be greater than our fear. And I think that's a great, great focus today. I was uh, jotting down some reasons why all of us need courage in our lives, uh, courage in our lives all the time, even when we're not facing uh, kind of an unknown enemy like we are right now with this virus. But uh, I wrote some things down. We need courage in our lives because there will always be obstacles to overcome. That's just a reality of life. We need courage in our lives because there are times when it seems like giving up is the easiest thing we can do. Uh, we need courage in our lives because there are times when we don't know what tomorrow holds and we don't know what tomorrow might bring. And certainly that's a little bit of the reality that <laughs> excuse me, that we're all facing right now. Uh, and then I wrote there, are, we need courage in our lives because there are people 
who are looking to us for their courage. And, you know, maybe that's the reality of your home, especially if you've got children still at home, smaller children. They're looking at you uh, as their mom and their dad uh, to get their courage and to be confident about tomorrow. And so in the midst of that reality, we read these words. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And one of the things I got to thinking about that verse is it's one thing to say that we need to be courageous. It's one thing to say that we need to choose courage, but we also need to discover how that happens because courage might not come easy to some people. And there are, I think, multiple different ways how, uh, or different ways how we can choose courage and choose to be courageous. One of them that I wanted to share with you today that's connected to this verse in Joshua is we can, we can choose courage by reading the Word of God, by reading the Bible. And I've got my Bible open here to Joshua chapter 1, and I want to read the verse right before our prayer verse today, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, because right before God commanded Joshua to be strong and courageous, this is what he said. This is Joshua 1, 8. He said, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth, Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So we can find courage. We can choose courage by making it a priority to read the word of God, to read the Bible. And in fact, in that one single verse, that one verse, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, uh, I think we can find three things that we can do on a practical level that will help us build courage in our lives and help us choose courage. The first thing we can do is make sure that we always speak the word because the very first thing Joshua says, or, or God says to Joshua in Joshua 1, 8, he said, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. And there are times, friends, when we just have to speak words of courage. Now, I think you do that by just saying out loud what you know the Bible says. And that, of course, requires us to have a little bit of the Bible memorized, but one simple way we could do that is we could just speak the words of Hebrews 13, where the Bible says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And when we start to feel like our courage is wavering and we feel like we're all alone and uh, we don't know what to do, we can remind us that we're not alone and that God is with us and that God will guide us and God will care for us. And we see that in those words, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And so we speak the word of God. We speak it. Maybe if you don't have it memorized, you can turn to certain passages and you can read them out loud. Hear your own voice speaking God's words to help you choose courage in difficult moments. The second thing Joshua 1.8 told us to do is not just speak the word of God, but think the word of God. Because he said, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. So we speak the word of God. And then he says, meditate on it day and night meditate on it day and night. So we speak the word of God and we think the word of God. We make sure that our mind is filled with all of the right kinds of things. Uh, and when our mind uh, begins to waver and uh, our, our courage rather begins to waver and our mind begins to wonder, or wander, we can make sure that we're focused on specific truths from God's word. Uh, I'm thinking about, for example, uh, we might uh, go to our Bibles and open them up to Philippians chapter four and verse eight and just read these words and let them go through our mind. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And so we think about the truth of God's word. You don't even have to have entire verses memorized. Just think about truths that you know from verses. Just like in that one, I always think if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And that gets my mind off of uh, any wrong things that I might be thinking in the moment. And so we choose courage when we speak the word of God, we choose courage when we think the word of God, and then we choose courage number three when we do the word of God. Because Joshua 1, 8 says, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. We speak the word of God, meditate on it day and night. We think the word of God. And then it says, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And we do the word of God. You know, even when we're, when we're in, uh, in uh, lockdown, so to speak, when we're in this under this stay-at-home order, we still uh, need to obey God. We need to obey the Word of God in, our, in everything that we do. 
related everything that we think everything that we do and every interaction we have with whoever it is that we might be at home with we need to make sure that we obey the word of god and so i think when we do those things when we speak the word of god when we think the word of god and we do the word of god that inspires courage in our lives that helps us to choose courage because then the very next verse is our verse for today god said this is my command be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so, let's just not forget about the crucial role that God's Word plays in our lives in every circumstance of our life, and that includes this circumstance where we're under this stay-at-home order, and um, uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know how long all of this will last, and we just have a lot of uncertainty. We we have great certainty with God and great certainty that God is in control. You know, I mentioned earlier, this isn't the, uh, that Joshua is about to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. This isn't the first time that they've, they've been there. Moses led them to the, the edge of the promised land when he led them out of Egyptian bondage. But they didn't enter into the promised land the first time because of their unbelief and because of their fear. Because of their fear, their fear kept them from experiencing what God had for them. And the result of their fear was they got stuck in the desert for 40 years. That just sounds horrible to me. I'm familiar with that story. I've known it since I was a child, but every time I think about it, it just sounds horrible. An entire generation of Israelites died in the desert. And so the lesson we learned there is that fear can keep you stuck in a desert place. Don't let that happen. Choose courage. That's the encouragement of today's verse. This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go, wherever you go. And so what we need to do today is we need to praise God and choose to follow his faithful presence to uh, be greater than our fear. I found a little story that I wanted to share with you real quickly before we pray. Uh, and uh, it's just a story to remind us uh, how important it is to just hang in there no matter what we're going through and not give up. This is the story. In 1952, Florence Chadwick attempted to swim the chilly ocean waters between Catalina Island and the California shore. She swam through foggy weather and choppy seas for 15 hours. Can you imagine that swimming for 15 hours? I can't swim for 15 minutes before I start sucking wind but she swam for 15 hours. Her muscles began to cramp and her resolve weakened. She begged to be taken out of the water, but her mother, riding in a boat alongside, urged her not to give up. She kept trying, but grew exhausted. And finally, in her frustration and her exhaustion, she just stopped swimming altogether, which endangered her life. And so, aides lifted her out of the water and into the boat. But here's what happened. They paddled for just a couple of minutes more and the mist and the fog that surrounded her broke and she discovered that the shore was less than a half a mile away. Later in a news conference, she said, all I could see in the moment was the fog. She said, I think if I could have seen the shore, I would have made it. Well, there's certainly times in our lives when all we can see is the fog. And maybe you're feeling that way today because this is day six of this stay at home order. And uh, you're like me and we're wondering, I mean, the thing that I wonder most is how, how long this is gonna last. Are we gonna get to, what was it, April 6th, I think? the day that uh, we were asked to stay uh, until uh, we were staying this stay at home order until April 6th. I think that was the right day. Are we going to get to April 6th and then find out we got to do this even longer? Uh, you know, we're surrounded by a lot of fog and a lot of mist right now. But we just got to remember that uh, beyond that fog and on that mist, God is there. He's got, he's there. The finish line is there. Um, getting our lives back to normal is there. And so we just can't give up. So don't give in to fear. Don't let unbelief or doubt creep into your life. Trust God. Be strong and courageous. Do that by uh, speaking the word, by thinking the word, and by doing the word. Stay close to God, and uh, we're all going to be able to get through this. Let's, uh, let's, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, remember, our prayer focus is let's pray. Uh, praise God and choose to allow his faithfulness or excuse me, his faithful presence to be greater than our fear. Let's praise God and choose to allow his faithful presence to be greater than our fear. So bow with me and let's pray together this morning. 
Our Father in heaven, as we bow our heads together, we do praise you. We, we, we recognize you as the one true sovereign God, the creator and sustainer of all things. There's no one like you, and we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. You are the one who spoke this universe into being. You're the one who sustains it every moment of every hour of every day. You're the one who's in control. And so we recognize your power and your might. We recognize that you're a good God and we give you praise and honor and glory. We lift you up today. And Father, I pray uh, today that as we, as we praise you, uh, that uh, we will also be reminded uh, of the promise that you've given us to always be with us, to never leave us or forsake us, and to help us to allow the knowledge of your presence uh, to be greater than any fear that we feel in this moment. I, I pray that with all my heart. And I pray, Father, that you would help us uh, as we go through each of these days of uh, being under this stay-at-home order, when we feel like our, our faith and our courage is beginning to waver, to turn to your word and to know that your word is a great resource for us so that we can speak your word, we can think your word, and we can do your word. And then I love the way that Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 ended. It said that if we do those things, that we will be prosperous and successful prosperous and successful. That's what anybody would aspire to. That's what anyone desires. Help us to be prosperous and successful when it comes to matters of faith. Help us to be prosperous and successful when it comes to the courage that we have and the courage that we demonstrate to those who are around us. That doesn't mean, Father, that we have to put on a false front and we can't have moments where we, uh, we feel a little down or, or, or we, 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 we feel a little vulnerable, but in those moments, help us to always choose courage over fear because as I said way back in the beginning of this the difference between fear and courage is that fear is a feeling that comes on us but courage is a choice that we make and so help us to choose courage every day I pray for everyone who's listening to me right now and who will listen who will listen to me in the future when they watch this video that you will help them to choose courage not just in this moment but in every moment as we move forward until father uh, you restore things uh, back to a sense of normalcy and we get back to our lives the way that we're used to. Watch over all of our Mount Pleasant family. Keep everybody safe. I pray for those who are sick and, and uh, those who may be in the hospital and those who are struggling. Uh, I pray that you would uh, give them healing and strength. I pray that you would provide uh, for everybody's needs in every way. And I'm so grateful uh, that we don't have to go through this alone, but we can go through this as a family, as a spiritual community. All of our Mount Pleasant community and all of our impact community uh, we're able to be able to, to do this together. We love you and we praise you and we pray all these things in Jesus' name and everybody wherever you are together said, Amen.